This is, this is, this is. All right, here we are, brand new episode of the podcast. Thanks for pushing play, hitting hitting that link, whatever it is. Uh, it's great to be here. Um, I just want to encourage everybody to be good to each other. Um, reach out to friends you haven't talked to in a while. Um, it means a lot to people. I, I really feel like as humans, we need connection to communicate. And even if you're friends with somebody and you haven't talked to them in a while, Sometimes it can feel like something's not right. Like, why haven't we talked in so long? So be the first person to reach out. Uh, I, I, I haven't always been good at that at all. I'm not always human when I text people. I could be, you know, ding, 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 texting somebody really short, really short bits. And, and I, I'm trying to get better at that. That's what I'm saying. So Mike is trying to get better um, at all things, you know, all things human. And that means really um, continuing that, that um, quest to reach out to people that I don't have time to even reach out to a lot of times, you know. So I always joke because I say, you know, if people want to hang out with me, they'll just come by and help me work on a project you know because i'm always working on something we need help we need we have team, you know, team of people that come out at times but uh you know like most of my friends have done a project or two with me with us this studio is a perfect example here um if you've caught any of the live streams we've been we were working on this all summer on this wall the whole wall is wood and we haven't really um, it just appeared, but maybe one of these days we'll, we'll show it a little closer, but, uh, that was a team effort. All of us guys and girls, um, came together, <laughs> MXPX family and, and friends came together and, and made it happen. So it was awesome. Um, I don't know. My point is reach out to, to your, your family, your friends, colleagues, people that you maybe used to talk to a lot and for one reason or another life gets crazy life gets busy and it's not because you don't want to have that relationship it's just you haven't you haven't had time and you haven't really thought about it and i'm i'm the same way you know like i said like mxpx is my life it's what i'm doing most of my days and and anything pertaining to mxpx and what what we do with that so it's not just mxpx only but it is the whole the whole uh infrastructure right so I don't know. I just felt compelled to, to mention that. And uh, let's get on with it. It's November. It's late November. We're going to be hitting Thanksgiving very soon. Goldfinger is uh, going to be playing Skanksgiving. That's coming up. Um, I think it's the Saturday after Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving is always on a Thursday. And I'll fly out on a Friday and, and we'll play. I'll see you in Jersey at the Starlight Ballroom. Um, it's going to be good. It's going to be really good. Um, I, I'm excited. I got to practice some, we're playing some songs we haven't played really ever. Like there was a few songs that I had to learn that I'd never heard before. So <laughs> I, I, I was like, wait, I'm questioning my fandom here. Like I thought, no, I, I definitely don't know all of the Goldfinger songs and I haven't even heard all of the Goldfinger songs, but you know, that's just because I I had their first album. I didn't even have their first album. Maybe I did, but I was a fan of their first album. Um, and then I was a fan of, of course, Superman and a few of their other songs. But um, I really I really had to dive into the catalog when I started playing bass for Goldfinger. So anyway, come on out and see us there. Uh, if you're on the East Coast, New Jersey, um, New York, we'll be at Skanksgiving right after Thanksgiving. Um and then MXPX. MXPX has Chicago coming up. Two shows back-to-back -back in December. Friday the 13th, Saturday the 14th at Metro. MXPX in the Ataris. We're still closing out our Find A Way Home tour. And that, um, with that said, though, this Chicago thing is a little different because it's not just one show. So we're having to add a lot of extra songs into each set. Um, each set's going to be different. Each set's going to have only the the top favorites that 
people must hear every show and we don't rip you off that way. We, we do give you that, but um, everything else is going to be different. So come on out to Chicago, mxpeaks.com. And then uh, we're going to have Christmas going to be awesome. Uh, I'm sure we're going to be doing some sort of live stream for Christmas. We've been doing live streams um, Thursdays, sometimes a Wednesday, but uh, trying to do them mainly on Thursdays this season. Um, and that's been on the MXPX YouTube, MXPX Facebook, all of that. And it's been so much fun. It's been on the my Carrera Facebook and YouTube as well, as well as like Tumble Down and, and Monkey Trench and some random things like that um, that are part of like my infrastructure. Um, and it's been so much fun because we're just doing your request. Every set, every set is your request. So we don't know what we're going to be playing. We kind of have a rough idea of some of the songs that were requested the, the week before. And uh, so if you haven't caught that, you can watch what we've already done on YouTube, on Facebook. The posts are up there. But it is a lot of fun. The energy is just different when it's live, you know, because it's actually live. Um, ringing in the new year. MXPX is going to be in Texas. January 3rd, House of Blues, Houston. January 4th, House of Blues, Dallas. That's a Friday, Saturday night. We're going to fly into Houston. And it's going to be awesome. Can't wait for it. Going to see all our Texas people. Much love to you. Um, we're probably going to be, I don't know, should we stop in Waco on the on our way to Dallas? We probably won't have time. We're going to have to leave early in the morning, and we won't need to talk about that. Um I'm excited about Dallas. I'm excited about coming back to Houston because it's been even longer since we've been to Houston. Houston, I can't even remember the last time we were in Houston. And um, and yes, if you're in San Antonio, you're just going to have to pick, come to Houston, come to Dallas, wherever you decide, it's going to be a great show. And um, if you're anywhere in between, like in Waco, I'd come to Dallas. That's probably closer. Um so anyway, tickets tickets are already filling up. So don't wait if you want to come out. Come out. Wish you know. Wish us a happy new year. I would love to see you. We're gonna do a meet and greet. Always free. Always right after the show. And um, that being said, let's get to this podcast. All right. I'm gonna do some voicemails. We're gonna be good to each other. Let's start with this one. Happy birthday. Haha. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very nice. My birthday was on the 6th a little while ago, but um, I'm just getting some of these voicemails, so thank you. By the way, voicemail, if you want to leave a message, you will have a story to tell, you have a topic, you want me to talk about something, you want my opinion on something. Um, we haven't been, it's been a long time since we've really talked about politics because I think things change so much so often that I want to be able to look back and listen to these podcasts and them to be about life and them to be about people's experiences with MXPX, people's experiences with music, with the punk scene. And yeah, sometimes politics do enter into that. But I generally, Bob McKnight, our producer Bob, um, always said, uh, and, and this was over over the, the, the pandemic times, he was like, man, I just want to get away from the news. I want to get away from current events I want to get away from the craziness of the world, including politics, especially politics. And and some of us like to follow politics, but not everybody does. And so I kind of made a decision to not talk about politics on the podcast as much. Not that it doesn't exist. I'm not ignoring it, but it's just a conscious decision to make this podcast about the MXPX experience, about my experience as a creative songwriter and sometimes that, yeah, I have a song called They about hating both candidates. The, the candidates are always like, oh, it's the lesser of two evils. Why is that? And the song They, I think, kind of sums up my frustration with with our political system. If you were wondering what I think about politics. Um, but, you know, call in. The number is 360-830-6660. Would love to hear what you think. All right? And... Um, and we'll continue with the next one. Here we go. Hey, what's up, Mike? It's Anthony. Happy belated birthday, homie. Oh, thank you. Hope it was great. So I was, was thinking with Halloween just passing, I was wondering if you have some, like, top five paranormal experiences to share. If you don't have a top five, just what are your top experiences of paranormal? 
thanks for answering the questions, man, like always. Good luck in your upcoming shows. God bless. Peace out, buddy. Thanks, Anthony. Thanks for the call. I don't know if I have a five. I mean, if I if I sat here long enough, I could come up with five. But um, but like you said, just top top weird experiences that I've gone through. Well, one thing I can think of is we were in this hotel um, somewhere in the Midwest. On I think it was the we had a day we had a day off. We were touring with Dashboard Confessional. And we stayed at this old historic hotel and whole wings of it were just empty. And it was just a really eerie, eerie feeling. And so we started just exploring and walking around and, and, um, and that feeling never went away. It just, it was always like this place is weird. Nothing happened. There's, we didn't see any ghosts, but that was, I feel like that place is definitely haunted. I wish I knew the name of it, uh, but the reason why I mention it is because the guys definitely remember. <laughs> I say now they definitely remember. They remembered for a long time that that place, like I think if I asked Yuri, he would remember the name of the hotel and, and where it was, but that's one. Um, Milwaukee. Hmm. Yeah, so... Uh, what is what is the venue in Milwaukee? Um, this place is haunted. It's um, let me look. Let me look it up. I can't believe I can't remember this. We just played there. The rave. Yes, the rave. Okay. Um, I mean, we played there, it was like two years ago. Um, we've played there many times, and I've had many experiences there. But one of the weirdest, and, and it started with, we were downstairs. We, we played there with Blink on their tour um, years ago. This is in the 90s. And we were in the basement, in the locker rooms, and their sound guy, Dave Ratt, literally was being crazy and th accidentally, not on purpose, threw a beer against the locker room, against the lockers, and it shattered into a thousand pieces and, and it cut this girl that was there. And just like, oh no. And just, it just this place, had it had like a horror movie kind of vibe to it where <laughs> weird things could happen, accidents could happen. You could, you could fall down this hole. Well, Years after that, you know, and we, I would never go anywhere by myself, really, usually in this place. But years later, uh, MXPX was, was back and headlining and um, did the show. It was kind of creepy, but good. And, uh, uh, and we were, after the show, everybody was packing up, and it was dark in the venue. Our, our, it was Neil, uh, my bass tech. He was in there kind of, he was like, he was a stage manager too. So like he kind of like was in charge of everything, but um, he was doing a dummy check by himself. A dummy check is in the business. We call it a dummy check. Hey, did you do a dummy check? That's when you go back into the venue after you think everything is out. You think you got all your gear and you look on the stage, you look in the dressing room. All right, good. You look, maybe you look in the merch area. I don't know, where, wherever you might look, you look, right? That's a dummy check. So he's doing his dummy check and he's at the entrance of of right where you walk into the big room from, from the hallway. And you see the stage and then behind that is a door that would lead to the backstage area. And that's where our dressing room is. Um, he, he's like looking that way and he sees this blacker than black figure shadow figure and it's floats out of the doorway and it's and it's floating it's not walking it's float it it's just like gliding and he's like is that what i think it is is that a shadow person you know 
and it comes it, it it keeps coming kind of towards him but it goes around up up the stairs and then it and then it stared right down to where he was looking and he said that freaked him out and he just took off and he came into the bus and he was white as a sheet and he it took him a while to like get the words out and tell us what happened like he he didn't want to talk about it and he still gets this crazy look whenever we bring up shadow person freakiness um another one <laughs> this one I'll just do one more and we'll move on. This one I was, I was, um, it's a two-parter. Studios seem to be haunted. So Robert Lang Studios was where we recorded. Slowly going the way of the buffalo. And we, re we recorded the drums for the ever-passing moment, or at least some of them, um, with Jerry Finn at Robert Lang. Anyway, it's in Seattle, it's North Seattle, it's Shoreline area. And we had a lot of fun experiences and stories from it. But one of the stories is this guy, Dubby, was Robert Lang, the, the owner of the studio. It was his dealer back in the day and friend, friend and dealer. It was his plug. So something had happened and Dubby disappeared, got killed. And back in, this is back in the day. And Robert was like, I had a dream and it was Dubby. And Dubby was pointing at this pile of money or not a pile of money. Sorry. He was just pointing. <laughs> he was just pointing at this, this place where like on my property and it's where the toilet is now <laughs> at the studio. It's like right where the toilet is. But at the time, it was just, it was just dirt. It was like outside of his house because his house w was built onto. And his house, you know, the studio is below his house and it's just this huge cavernous place that, you know, he built out of the side of the mountain. And so Dubby's pointing, Dubby's pointing at this place and, so he wakes up from this dream and he starts digging. Sure enough, he finds hundreds of thousands of dollars in this hole. And he's like, that's how I built this studio. We're like, what? Are you, are you kidding me? Um, he was dead serious. And, 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 and it makes sense because Robert Lang, he's a, he's a kind of a, a crazy genius kind of guy he's a definitely could build things but he just started building onto this house with all this money he got and at some point took it too far couldn't stop you know like those ladies you see with cosmetic surgery and they can't stop getting cosmetic surgery and their lips start getting giant and they can't move their face or their eyebrows that's what i'm talking about but studio wise like like if i started like digging a hole in the studio in the basement to make it a cavernous orchestra pit like who needs a cavernous orchestra pit in their studio i mean i'd love one but it's not going to be a sound decision you know when it comes to financial decision you know like you don't want to invest all your money in that when it's there's they're not coming to your studio bro i'm digressing so he sees this money builds the studio and here we are but here's the problem. Dubby's a ghost. And Dubby likes to fuck with people. So one night, you know, we hear this story and things start happening. Like things are moved. Um, you know, there's this band, um, Screaming Trees, that were in the studio before us. And they had a story where they had a seance and a Ouija board. And they were all like smoking joints or whatever. And they had an ashtray in the middle of the, the console right in the middle of the studio where we did some of our, uh, <laughs> some of our music videos for uh, Slowly Going the Way of the Buffalo. Um, 
we built dioramas right there in the same spot. But I digress. They're having a, some sort of seance, which I don't recommend, especially if you know there's a ghost there, unless you want chaos to happen. And the ashtray starts spinning around. It's like, isn't that a little cliche? Like, come on, do something cool. But that didn't happen to us. What happened to us was weird things were kind of happening. Lights would come on, lights would go off, uh, the TV would turn on. But one day we went out to dinner, or no, it was actually at the end of the night. I was, we, we were playing, we were doing our stuff, we were recording, we're playing as a band. So we all had our instruments in the live room. Went, left for the night. I had my bass on a stand, on a rack. Um, and it was just in the room on the, you know, whatever. And what's happening? I'm not hearing myself anymore in the headphones. Weird. All right. Oh, now I'm hearing myself. All right. Sorry about that. Um, I think my headphone just was loose or something. So we left and came back the next morning. And the bass that was in the rack was just face down right on the floor. Like, sure, it could have just fallen face down. But why? And it was still in tune. It was as if somebody had played it and then left it on the ground. So I don't think it was face down, it was face up. It was like, how did it get face up? It was something that didn't make sense. And that was weird. And it didn't really freak us out though. I think the freakiest thing for me was, I don't know, I don't know what it is about st studios, but right here at Monkey Trench, Charlie, um, we have a guy and he left a note it's framed. It's, it's something I don't want to talk too much about because the more you talk about him, the more he'll come around. But um, it was when we were doing a lot of construction, moving things around a lot. Things were changing. Walls were changing. Paint was changing. And I was on a live stream. It was back when the, in the Stick Am days. Remember Stick Am? Stick Am? Stick Am? Um, it was what we used to go live on before we could just go on YouTube or Facebook. And I was, I was alive talking to some people. I was upstairs in the control room. And I remember while I was talking, I saw somebody walk by and look at the camera that looked a lot like Andrew Anderson, my old pal, um, cause he was downstairs. He was downstairs at the time, but he and so I was like, what? He had a beard. And I, I get up, I go down there. I'm like, Andrew, did you, were you just upstairs? And he's like, no, I'm on the phone. I've been on the phone. He, he was on the phone. And that was the freakiest thing ever because other people also saw it, but nobody caught it on, like nobody was recording it. And these things were live and they weren't posted after like, it, like they are on, on Facebook. So that's it. That's my... Um, a couple paranormal things I can think of. All the best to Bob uh, Bob Lang. I, I love the guy. I mean, no disrespect uh, from telling his his crazy stories, but he's a character. I'll tell you that. All right, am I a character? I don't know. I own a studio. Um, you got to be somewhat of a character, but I don't think I'm a character in the same way. <laughs> All right, let's get to the next one. Mike, I bought your jacket. I've been wearing your MXP jackets for two days in Orange County. I've got calling cards for people to be like, oh my God, I love that band. Just wanted you to know I'm advertising. Nice. Thank you for, for supporting. Thanks for, for wearing it out in public. I appreciate that. That's the best. Um, we do have a lot of great stuff at mxpeaks.com, and uh, it's all mom and pop. It's all, you know, friends and family working with us. So we appreciate all the love and patience, um, which you try to do, do our best with that. And um, we got new song out called Set a Fire. Here's a pick for it. Um, but uh, anytime you listen to MXPX, that's, that's huge for us too. So you don't just have to order from MXPX.com. You can listen to the music, come see us live, listen to the live, watch the live streams when it's live or 
rewatch it, any of that, any anything, anytime you come to uh, our site, uh, push subscribe on the MXPX YouTube, um, on the Facebook, any of that, that all helps us. We appreciate that. So, um, but thanks, thanks for uh, repping MXPX with your jacket, man. It's rad. All right, let's do one more. Hey, Mike, it's your turn, Dan from Cleveland. I uh, picked up my tickets for both nights in Chicago. Uh, 99% sure I'll be there. Um, just got to, you know, figure out all those plans. But, um, you know, I always buy the tickets first, and then it's a little more motivation to make sure I actually make it out. So, anyhow, my question is for you. I know you've played Chicago a number of times. Listen to this week's podcast. Wait, quick question. If you're 99% sure you're going to be there, if you don't make it, does that make you the one percent? All right, just asking. Uh, you know how much you love going there. Uh, it's a fun city. Uh, I've been there a few times as well. He's talking about Chicago. He's going to come to Chicago. Pretty much always to see you guys play, or <laughs> once you were doing a solo set, I think. Um, yeah. But anyhow, no, I went with my family once. Unimportant. Anyhow, my question is for you: any recommendations on? Uh, a place I should hit to eat while I'm out that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you, I know you love to eat, love to love to give and, and take recommendations on that. So any any advice you can give on a spot to hit while I'm out that way will be great. Mm-hmm. Talk to you soon. Bye. All right. If you like spicy, thanks for the call, Attorney Dan. Thanks for the call. Better call Attorney Dan. That didn't work, but I was trying to better call Saul. Um, it's all good, man. I'm going to say, number one, Portello's. Um, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Portillo's, Portello's. It's Chicago hot beef sandwiches with peppers. And it, if you like a little spicy sandwich, uh, a roast beef au jus, that's the place. It's great. If you like a sausage, they got sausages and different kinds of meats. Um, that's, that's so Chicago. Uh, you're, you could slap your mother. I don't even know why I said that. It's so Chicago. It's like a deep dish pizza. There we go. <laughs> I don't know why is Chicago like slapping your mother? It's not. It's not. Uh, we're going to be at Metro two nights, Friday the 13th and Saturday the 14th in December. That's coming up sooner than you realize. It is almost December. So get your tickets at MXPX.com. We'll see you there. I can't wait. It's, it's bringing back so many nostalgic memories because Metro was where we played in the slowly going the way of the Buffalo tours, uh, the Life in General tour. We might have been playing there by then maybe, but definitely slowly was when we started playing Metro and, and we played there for many, many times, many tours and haven't been back in over 10 years, in over maybe even 15 years. I'm not sure. So we're really, really looking forward to those shows. They're going to be very special to us. Um, and Chicago is always awesome. Great crowds. So I, I, I know it's going to be packed. Um, all right. So Portilla, Portillo's hot beef sandwiches. If you don't want meat, go get a deep dish pizza somewhere. I don't know the, the name of the place that's best. Um, you're going to have to you're going to have to do some some Googling on that. But um, all right. That was awesome. Thank you. Thanks for the call. What should we call this episode? Um, a lot of times I'll think I'm going to call it something and then I'll change my mind and call it something else. But um, better call Chicago. No, better call Attorney Dan. There you go. Better call Attorney Dan. I'm probably not going to call it that because that has nothing to do with the episode. Hot beef injection? Maybe that. <laughs> Hot beef FTW? Um I don't know. <laughs> Sorry if you have children, uh, but we love our sandwiches. Um, much like Arby's, we got the meats. We've got the meats. Have you seen that commercial? Uh, you know, I'm not a, a big commercial guy. I hate it when my my own kids pay attention to the commercials. I'm like, we don't have to watch the commercials. We can do other things. Uh, but sometimes commercials are fun. Honestly, um, I guess it just kind of depends on on the, the, the type of, of uh, commercial it is, but I'm digressing a lot right now, and I apologize. Thanks for tuning into the podcast. Come see us live. Like I said, we'll be in Chicago. MXPX is going to be in Texas, um, January 3rd, House of Blues, Houston. January 4th, House of Blues, Dallas. Again, tickets at mxpx.com. 
And we'd love to see you there. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be cold. It's cold in Texas. So if you're from Florida and you expect, oh, I'm going to fly over to Texas, you should, you should, but it's going to be a little chilly. So bundle up, enjoy it, because um, before you know it, it's going to be hot again. People are going to be sweating their asses off down there in Houston. Shout out to uh, Cadman. What's up, bud? Um, bring me some super glue. Just kidding. I already fixed it. Even, in fact, one second. In case Josh Cadman actually listens to this or, or, or watches the, the YouTube version, I fixed it with super glue. There was a piece when he gave it to me at the Palladium in January, almost a year. It'll be like, that'll be a year from Dallas. So I'll see you uh, one day early in Houston. Oh, sorry about that. That's my daily alarm going off to, uh, <laughs> well, you don't want to know. Anyway, <laughs> it's not as bad as you think. And it's nothing medical. Um, all right. Uh, I do weird things like I remind myself to be thoughtful. I remind myself to be, to use full sentences. I remind myself to um, give context when I bring up a subject or an idea. Um, why? I don't know. Because sometimes I get ahead of myself in my head and I, I forget to be a human like I was talking about earlier. Um, all right. Hey, this has been great. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Remember, go get out there, contact your, your good friend that you haven't talked to in a little while. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to hit up three people that I have not texted in a while. Although it's a little hard because people, a lot of people sent me birthday love. And if you were one of those people, thank you so much. Um, I tried to heart as many of your comments as I could on all the social media places I could. And I know I didn't get them all. I apologize for that. But I did see as many as I could. And I, I appreciate that. All the love. Shout out to Bob McKnight, producer Bob. Thank you, my man. Um, you inspire me in a lot of ways. So uh, make sure you guys show Bob love anytime you post something on, on social media. Maybe we can get him to release some more music soon. All right. With that being said, I do want to put together a Music Monday soon because it's piling up. We got a lot of submissions on the YouTube, or sorry, not the YouTube, on the Facebook private group where we get YouTube links of your music from the podcast community here. And it doesn't just have to be punk rock. It could be any kind of music as evidenced by some of the submissions. And uh, hey, we welcome, we welcome your artistic endeavors. Bring it on. Um, so you can uh, come to the MXP, or the, well, you can go to the MXPX Facebook and like it, but also go to the Mike Herrera Podcast Facebook group. Join it if you're not part of it already, because it's a private group, but it's free. We don't let, we try to keep the spam out, which is why it's a private group. All right. That's it, mxpeaks.com. Thanks for all the love. Thank you. Talk to you soon.